Hey everybody, Steve Scott here, and I want to introduce you to one of the most unique weight training facilities in the United States. It is in the Barn of Truth here at John Saylor's personal home. He has a, a bottom floor, as you're going to be seeing here, his weight room, and the upper, upper area, the first floor is a dojo and office, and the third floor is his living quarters. And this is certainly one of the most unique training places in the United States. And I just want to give you a quick tour here. Got John coming in here. But you're seeing here, this is old school training. This is what we old timers call dinosaur training. And it is certainly that. And you can see some, some areas are not well lit, so we're gonna see some, maybe not the quality of video is super great, but we're, we're gonna have John give us a tour here of this. And I got John right here. John Saylor is, uh, as many of you know, he watched my videos. Uh, he really knows his stuff, especially, well, judo, jiu-jitsu, sambo, all that stuff, but boy, his, one of his great fortes is, is uh, strength development, strength training, and periodization, all kinds of very scientific, very pragmatic approach to training. So, John, here you are, and there you are, the, the screen here left. Can you just give us a quick tour of this place? I mean, I, I love, I, every, well, every time I come here, I love this place. This is the best way to remember. I don't know where to remember. start. You know, we have the standard stuff. We have, you know, a squat rack, and for people that do shoulder throws, seonagi, and any kind of a hip toss. Uh -huh. Uh, squats are very important. That should be fundamental to so your over training. Here, guys, so over here, guys, I'm going to focus in here if I can here. There, this, this is a squat rack. And by the way, John has had this squat rack for years. This is one of those, uh, uh, what do they call it? Step in, incline, stop, step uh, squat racks. I forget I, what the I don't brand, know what they call the it, but you can dump the bar off easy enough. Yeah, any, and any it's great there. for training. And so it's, it's fairly safe, you know? Right, right. Uh, one of the other things that's kind of interesting, we have a belt squat machine, and there are times, especially if you're a judo player, a samba player, uh -huh. wrestler, uh, you jack your back up somehow. Right. And this machine, you can do squats, you can work your lower body, and it, it helps your back, actually. It serves as traction. You hook a belt up to this, and the weight is uh, back on, on that uh, uh, runner there on the pipe but the weight is pulling down from your belt. And because of that, it actually serves as traction and helps heal your back as you work your lower body. Mm -hmm. Really good for, Great for, traction. for anybody, yeah. any judo player, but especially those that are doing hip tosses where you need to get under your opponent's center of gravity. I mean, it's right. a great unit. And uh, one that I think is really cool, this was, uh, yeah, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Louis Simmons from West Side Barbell. You should really look up his West, uh, his West Side hyphen barbell on the internet. But this was his prototype of a plyo swing, a plyometric swing. It's basically like a leg press, but you can add weight on the back. But notice the bands underneath. We have bands hooked up. Uh, one of them's off right now, but the, the bands bring you back faster. They not only add resistance, so the further you press out, the more the bands stretch out and the more resistance they give you, but they also pull you back down faster, and it creates an overspeed eccentric, eccentric. And when that happens, all kinds of kinetic energy is stored in your tendons and your ligaments, and it gives you great reversal strength also. It's amazing. It makes you very explosive. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's a great asset it's for take, judo players. It's taking the, the opposite, the concentric, eccentric yeah. movement to the extremes, actually, yeah. in, in terms of training. Well, what else you got over here? I mean, show sure, well, these, these are some all, I got, great stuff. You know, power racks and things like that. And upstairs we have the ropes and stuff. Rope climbing is very mm -hmm. important right. for grapplers of any kind. Um, and, and, you know, that brings mm -hmm. up another thing. I mean, most of the stuff... You got to include body weight exercises too right. for conditioning. I'm going to back out here, guys. I got the, the behind me, behind the camera view here. You're seeing nice big opens to the sun. This is a lot of light here, so I'm going to get my back to it so I can get a better view. Yeah. I don't want the glare. Hey, John, can you explain quickly what this machine is oh, here? Oh yeah, this is a this is unique. A, this is great. We want to talk about this. This is a reverse hyper machine right here, and the person lies over the table right here and raises his legs up and down. And every time the, uh, the weight goes back under, it actually opens up your discs. Mm -hmm. It opens them up so fluid re-enters. It's actually healing to your low back. And, uh, you know, it's the opposite of a regular hyper or back raise. Mm -hmm. I know. I, I have one of these smaller unit in my gym at yeah. my house, which, yeah. you know, I have a little dungeon myself, but it's yeah. quite a bit smaller than yours. 
but I do have a reverse hyper here and I use yeah. it regularly yeah. and it's, my low back it certainly has helped it tremendously yeah, myself but, too. Yeah. but this guy this was the invention of, of Louis Simmons yes it was and we're both we're both followers of you know, John personally is a good friend of Louis Simmons he's, he's worked with him on some book publishing and stuff right. Uh, but Louis is really, really knowledgeable. So he's got the strongest gym in the world. And he invented it. It's not opinion; it's the it's, records. It's, right. They don't lie. I mean, he has more strong athletes and uh, power lifters than anyone in the world. And this was his invention, yeah. and he's been selling them for quite a bit. So he used it to heal his own back injury. He had uh, blown his back somehow. I, I don't know the nature of the injury, but it involved his discs and so on. And he was unable to deadlift and, and do his, his power lifting. And he was he a world-class power lifter, by the yeah, way. Yes, oh, yes. Yeah, and he invented this machine, and it essentially healed his back, and he went on to compete again. Mm -hmm. And he's a uh, total elite in four different weight classes. Wow, that's you know, fantastic. In his lifetime, and now he's like the great guru of power lifting, but he also coaches many uh, pro football oh, team strength coaches. Performance training, and, performance training, yeah. Uh, track and field mm -hmm. athletes, not just throwers, shot putters, as uh, he said, world-class shot putters, discus throwers, uh, sprinters. Mm -hmm. uh, Butch Reynolds was one, a 400-meter runner in one of the Olympic Games. So what, also, let's, let's uh, Rig talk with power racks. Well, let's here. talk a little bit about the building here. You can see here these beams. Yeah. How old? How old is this barn, John? Gosh, I don't know, but it's well over, probably a hundred, uh, you know, well over a hundred years old. Now, I'd say because the the beams, you notice they were notched with an adz, you know, and the Amish built this many years this, ago. This was an old barn. We're talking yeah. North Central Ohio here, everybody, in yeah. Perrysville, Ohio. Yeah. And I remember when John um, moved in. What, back in 94, 95, somewhere around then? I can't yeah, remember what 95. year. And, yeah. and I remember your dad, God rest his soul, what a great man. And this area here, you see here, everybody, was uh, the, the cattle would come in and out when they would, when they, when this back behind this me was, was open. This was their home. This was, yeah. and, and as John said, or as John's dad said, Reverend Saylor said, well, we moved the cattle out and we moved John in. <laughs> and and it's, that, yeah. it, it's just so, so strikingly funny, but it was the true. Yeah, uh, and, and this this is a, a the ideal training area. Let's a few more things here. Right in front of you here is a unique yeah. uh, Just tool. Just gripping and stuff. It, it's this for gripping, and all you guys who are involved in gripping, no matter what your sport, but it is. He's got a softball there connected to um, just really a, a set. You know, just pull up there for barbells, and you can use that for gripping. Just something to work to grip, and you know, we occasionally do. Uh, I think there's value in doing extra workouts and uh, you know when you're sitting there watching a movie or something you can uh, do grippers iron mine makes some great grippers right right and they're not the kind that your aunt Betty can close that you get from the sporting goods store these are <laughs> serious <laughs> serious grippers yeah, the iron man and make, they give you, you know, if you're in judo yeah. or, or if you're in any kind of grappling sport to be able to secure right. wrist control right. for example and maintain control you have to have a strong grip and you know these are the little extra things that you know 15 I'll focus minutes in on this guys so you can see so yeah. you can you can fashion one of these yourself i'm sure they yeah. make them you know you probably get anything on google i guess these, these days i put all my old rusty weights on here hit uh anyway you know you just got a carbiner and a the plates load on the pipe and, there and we've drilled a a little i don't i'm not a a fix-it guy or a handy but you can guy. see that softball everybody called. just drill it through there yeah, and, a little and actually loop. john was the one who introduced this to me gosh i don't know 30 years ago yeah. uh, doing this type of movement i had yeah. one in my gym and uh it's uh, quite effective yeah. uh, yes. john let's let's go over here real quick we're almost done all right can you show some of you've got some great uh plyometric things here you got some uh, oh. box jumpers here yeah okay yeah. by the way guys we're getting into a darker part of the gym where, where yeah the light doesn't the work light doesn't here. work so great over here but the, <clears throat> by the way a lot of this equipment you had when you had back in colorado, colorado springs when you springs. had your gym back still then still working yeah, so, yeah, we've got some others lying around, but we have various height jump boxes. And I think, again, for anybody in judo, develop, developing explosive strength through jumping. And uh, when I was at the Olympic Center, I had them jumping upstairs. It was something I saw at Tokai University in Japan. Uh, every other morning we'd do running, and then in between days we were in their weight room. Uh, and the Americans were much stronger generally. 
than the Japanese in upper body strength, and the Europeans were stronger than the Japanese in upper body strength, but they had superior lower body strength. Now, most of us Americans, all we had ever done were squats in the weight room and leg curls, stuff like that. But this first day that we did this particular workout, we could barely walk. They took us, Tokai was kind of on the outskirts of Tokyo, and it, there were parts of it that were semi-rural. You'd run through a rice paddy, and then you'd, you'd spin around, and the next thing you know, you're going up a parking garage, all the way up, and you're running that. And then you come down and you run through another rice paddy, and you end up at a, a temple or a shrine. And this shrine had steps all the way up to the, to the shrine area. And we would hop those, and they would do it eat one step at a time, pop, 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 in a squat position, hopping up all the stairs. And sometimes you would hop up multiple stairs at a time. You'd hop up, boink, and the minute your feet hit, you would rebound to the next step and to the next one all the way up. And then you'd go back down and you'd do this several times, or you'd carry your partner. You could carry him like a sionagi or a hip tosser. You could get him in a, a katagaruma position, or like carry him here, like in a zercher uh, squat type position. You would run your partner up the steps, and they would do this, and then you'd when you finished all that legwork, and there were multiple trips up the steps, maybe, gosh, I can't remember how many steps, I wish I'd counted, maybe 20, 25 steps, it was, it was a, a workout. When you got up there, then you're doing push-ups, sit-ups of various kind with your partner and uh, all different types of partner exercises. But we were so sore, our lower bodies were just hurting, and of course you have practice, Randori that afternoon you know, a two and a half hour session in the, in the afternoon. So that was rough, but the Japanese were much stronger in their lower bodies compared to the Americans. And that's why uh, their judo was so good at the time. They had no trouble getting under an opponent's center of gravity with maximum explosiveness. They were fast and explosive. Mm -hmm. And that type of jump track. So I brought that to the Olympic Training Center and I had the guys jumping stairs. And uh, it helped their judo. It helped it a lot. They became more explosive from it. Uh, so you can use a stairwell. But they also sell these jumping boxes. And those are nice because you can measure. Of course, you could measure how many steps you go up. But, you, you know, they go up in increments like that. These you can, uh, you have various height boxes. Keep track of what your box jump height is. Right. And then a lot of you guys watching this, you probably have this in a, uh, you know, like a, a fitness facility or something near yeah. your community center. They're, they're, a lot of these are fairly common now, but they're certainly worth it uh, to have because the plyometric movement, the, the explosive movement is, is, is quite important. Um, Another thing I got... Uh, let's focus in on this here, yeah. I gave, I gave Louis Simmons a picture of this. I'm hoping he manufactures it. This is a plate-loading uh, machine, and it's for specific... Um, exercises. You know, it's a four-way hip machine. You can work adductors, you can abductors, but I use it most often for uh, sweeping motions or reaping motions mm -hmm. like Osotogari and Osotogari, mm -hmm, Right. And, you know, we just woke up when Steve here. got this camera here. It's, what, 8.30 <laughs> in the morning right now, and we just had our cup of coffee, so I'm not stretched out at all. But the idea is to do your reaping motion like Osoto. You know, like this. You know, and it's, uh, you do, uh, you know, work up to however many reps you know, I generally do sets of 20 each let's, leg. Let's focus, so like, look, if you guys can see this, he's got some stones on top, it's not, that's, the well, plates aren't enough, he puts stones on there, well, which I love, this is, this is a, Dinosaur training, like we say, and you can take <laughs> yeah. a look at this. There are a lot of machines like this that John has. He's adapted to to work for judo, grappling, anything. And I, I remember when my, my sister-in-law, Jan Trussell, was training with you in Colorado Springs. Yeah, yeah. You had her do this a lot, and she had a really nice Uchimata Oso to go. She surely did. Jan Trussell Jan was Trussell. a killer. Jan Trussell, yes, she was a killer. Yeah, absolutely. And, this is, and she, she said, I'll tell you what, when my... When my throws started getting really powerful is when I started using that machine at John's place. Right. And, and she said, oh, yeah, Sailor, Sailor helped me. Yeah. So I, she was a world sambo champion, everybody, by the way. So she was quite a, quite a she was accomplished a, athlete. She was a national <clears throat> champion in judo many times. But that, but that shows you how good training, good off-the-mat yeah. training is so essential. And, and, you know, all you guys who watch my videos know 
John and I are firm believers in this, and and we live it. I mean, this yeah. is uh, this is his house. This is his bottom floor of his house. But uh, well, I know it's, we've been here a while, John. But well, but there are a lot of other things. Anything else you want to show us before we leave? Well, you know, we got the general stuff. Uh, you know, squat racks and, and the power racks, so you can train safely within a rack without being well, hurt. Let's focus one more thing, John. I think it's very good. Let's look at, look at the rings. You you, yeah. you are just a great advocate. Let's take a look here, guys. If you can see well, it, I know it's a dark video here, but see those big rings on those chains, mm -hmm. and what John does. Well, John, I'll have you explain. Just you don't have to do it, obviously, but. Uh, can can you explain if uh, well you, you, you do push-ups in there you, you do push-ups and you can raise the bar in the middle so you can vary the height but the the chains and the rings they wobble right. and you know that sends contractions all through your upper body mm -hmm. not only are you stabilizing your core to do push-ups and things like that but the rings actually wobble around a little bit and that's that's good for what we do because uh, judo isn't just in one line. Right. You know, your opponent is forcing you to move all over the place. You need to work all these axil yeah. auxiliary muscles, yeah. these other muscles, these small muscles, like, like our great friend Bob Corwin says, yeah. don't just work the big muscles, work all the support work muscles the as well. small stuff, yeah. And, and work the small stuff. And this is a good example of that, how yeah. you would do that. So Since you're running out of tape, probably, or whatever that is, so you, <laughs> out of time, a glute ham raise is something every judo club or every grappler should have because the big injuries in judo... For example, our knees and shoulders. Mm -hmm. You can injure everything else. You got to work your whole body, uh, but you should always work your your hamstrings. Most people have weak hamstrings. Their posterior chain is so much weaker than their their front, and and that's where injuries come from. Those type of imbalances. And uh, I never seriously injured my knee again when I started doing glute ham raises. And I wish I knew about it when I was a competitor in judo, and I didn't know. And, you know, I asked Louis Simmons, I said, do you think everybody has to end up like us with artificial joints and, and beat up? He said, no, I don't think so. You know, by prescribing the right exercises at the beginning, you can avoid much of that. That's you know, you're great gonna, advice. That's you're great get your advice. dings and dents. This is a combat sport. Mm -hmm. But a lot of that stuff can be avoided. Yeah. And, you know, I've had knee replacements and things. I didn't know about this stuff starting off. Right. You know, right. we were reading what we could read in uh, Strength and Health magazine. And or, well, or I remember you and I were big advocates yeah. of the old Soviet Sports Review. Yeah. We would just scour over well, that. that's when we started to actually uh, learn how to train for sport. Mm -hmm. more. Yep. You know, that I was big on how much can I bench press? Who, you know, you know, I'm not a bench press champion. We're, we're competing in, in sport. Mm-hmm. It, 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 there are three types of training, basically general training, and you got to do it because your technique can suffer because of a, a lagging muscle group, for example. One of your muscles might be the cause of uh, the failure of your technique. You know, if my leg collapses as I'm doing an Osoto or an Uchimata, am I going to improve my Uchimata further by doing more Uchimatas? Maybe a little bit, but it hasn't worked so far. Mm -hmm. You got to fix the problem. And, and then work your Uchimata or your Osoto again. Until you fix the problem, weak lower body, uh, weak drive, driving leg, your Osoto Gari is not going to work, no matter how much you practice the Osoto Gari. Right. So you've got general training. You've got to do it. Uh, advanced athletes, maybe not quite as much. You know, a beginner should maybe be 75% general training and 25% specific. Mm -hmm. An intermediate, maybe 50-50. An advanced athlete, probably 25% general training and 75% specific, but there's still that 25% there. He still does it throughout the year, all year long. That's why we're against uh, block periodization. If you know that, you know, dividing the year into four phases, we used to think that was the way to go. So in other words, phase one, you do all this general training, then you drop it. And as you get into the pre-competitive phase and the competitive phase, you drop your general training. Why would you allow yourself to weaken and go back down? Why would you lose every, you know, a great deal of what you worked mm -hmm. for? You know, uh, Zatsyorsky, one of the Russian uh, writers, I think termed it this way. Why would you go halfway up the mountain and then climb back down? You know, you've already built that up. So we like to go in three-week waves. 
instead of black periodization. And each week, you may, the first week may be 60% in terms of volume and in, uh, intensity on some of the, the speed days and things. The next week, 80%. The following week, 100% in terms of the total amount of training. And you three-week wave it that way. But each single week has general training in it, workouts for general training. It has other days where it's specific training, speed training. And so you're getting all the physical qualities each week. Okay. Maximum strength, endurance day, speed day, uh, the most intense workouts, whether it's maximum strength or speed day, they're separated by 72 hours. But anyway, by doing a three-week wave like that and varying the intensity each week, week one, you know, I, I do in judo practice too, 60% of the rounds. You know, let's say you've built up to 10 five-minute rounds of randori. Uh, first week, maybe six, five minute rounds. Second week, eight. The third week, ten. You know, and then you go back to six. You now you vary the time limits of things, but that's the general mm -hmm. idea. And, and you also have your auxiliary training where you're doing your general training, your circuit training, your strength training, explosive training, all those different things. And you do this each week throughout the year. And I might, might add the reason we, we like this three week wave training that we used to, we were big advocates of block periodization yeah. both of us were yeah. but here's the deal guys who are watching this um, the combat sports we train for whether it's judo sambo jiu-jitsu uh, MMA whatever you do you know you you have to like John said you have to be prepared and ready to fight just at any time exactly exactly so that's yeah. why this is type of this type of training that he's talking about the this type of uh, it is periodization in yeah. a sense, but it's a more advanced way for fighters, for grapplers, and that's, exactly. what, that's what John's focusing here. Well, you, you brought up a here. great point. A lot of times you don't hear about a fight or a contest until two weeks ahead of time or three weeks. All you have to do in a case like that, if you've been training this way on three-week waves, is just uh, they don't have, you don't have to complete a three-week cycle. You have an unloading phase where for two weeks you start to unload your training. You're doing fewer sets, you're doing fewer randori rounds uh, in, until the contest arrives. Right. And then your body goes through a super compensation phase and you end up fully recovered by contest and you have a great contest generally. You're ready to go mm -hmm. physically. Right, right. But anyway, keep in mind that the general uh, training and then there's specific training. I should talk about Louis's latest machine. Let's go to it. Dynamic okay, machines. let's do it. We'll wrap up with this. So everybody, yeah. if you're still watching, and I hope you are, because this this is the type of stuff. This is uh, quite quite innovative, quite advanced you know, uh, training, and I think it's uh, beneficial. So I, please, I've, you can, I hope you will stay with us and keep watching. Again, it's like really early in the morning. We just woke up and didn't warm up. But what I like about this unit, it's a pulley device, but it has a static brake back here. It has a brake in the back where if you have a I'll partner around the other side john i don't want to step on your stuff you can right. get into position say for a judo throw right here okay. and you'd be going one thousand two one thousand three one thousand four one thousand five one thousand your partner releases and you can finish the movement but myself 90 percent of the time i come down here i don't have a partner with me when i do i, I do the static dynamic work but with this machine, you can work almost any sports movement. In this case, I'm going to work the finish of my throw by just getting into position and finishing the torque right here. Okay? And this is good for any hip toss, any forward throw in judo. You notice I have a judo gi. Right. Loops everybody can, everybody so focus in there. So, gi. so he's, he's actually grabbing the cloth of a right. gi, judo gi, sambo gi, whatever it may be. And it replicates the real thing. It does. Yeah, I should yeah. probably move up just a little. You're good. So okay. that I'm full range. But anyway, right here, I want to make sure if I'm a right sider and I'm working the right side, that I turn my right ear down to the mat this way. This is how you get the opponent off your back. Okay? Right here. But, and then you work both sides, of course. Mm -hmm. We don't want to walk around lopsided. You can practice your kazushi, your pole. You can uh, adjust this pole, the up or down. You can do reaping actions, sweeps, uh, various foot sweeping motions, all kinds of stuff. Now, these machines are way outside the ability of most people to purchase. You know, unless your club has a great fundraising program, 
which I highly recommend every club should do. I mean, in judo, for example, we need to start training like professionals if we want to get Absolutely top right. results. Absolutely and, right. uh, some of this equipment is invaluable stuff. I can also everybody point out, see the see the bands. I'll focus here. Uh, look at these. These are like super super bands. They're massively uh, thick. Those and, are and medium bands. Those actually. are actually medium. There yeah. you go, medium bands. And then, yeah. But but there are different types of bands. So whether it's band work, uh, dumbbell work, uh, machines. Yeah. You got to do uh, it all. Yeah. You got to do it all. It's it's a, it's a variety. There, I got a better view there. It's a variety of training, guys. That is, um, oops, sorry, one for my, but it's a variety of training that is necessary because we're not just a static sport. We're we're right. a moving. It's a dynamic sport, and uh, what, no matter what the sport, it's, it's combat sports, whatever it may be. Yeah. Everybody can afford those bands too. I'll tell you another yeah. piece most people can afford is to get yourself a towing sled. It's outside mm -hmm. in my shed. Uh, but you put weights on it, or you could drag an old tire, a big tire, for example, and, and loop it up to a weight belt and drag that around. They have harnesses. Those are expensive. Right. Well, you can, you can buy those commercially now, yeah. as you know. So. But I recommend a towing sled. You can do your kazushi. You can walk around in judo motions. You can do twisting, uh, walking, long strides, build your entire posterior chain. A great device. I think it costs a little over $100, $140. Worth something. the investment, guys. Worth the yeah, investment. Yeah, i got to do it. Yeah. Well, anyway, John, I hope John that helps. thanks so much. Uh, this this is, uh, we, you come in here at first blush, it, it looks like, uh, well, there, there's, by the way, there's John, John's dog, Boomer, who is a fixture here at the barn. But <laughs> but if, it, at first blush, it looks like, oh, gosh, that's rudimentary. I, I work in clean, modern places, whatever. That's great. We like clean, modern places. Yeah. But, you know, places like this uh, have a purpose. Yeah. And, and serious training goes on in this room. I know that for a fact. So. It's uh, nice just, having it in your own house. You don't have to yeah. get ready to go to the gym, shower, come home. You're, you just get down the stairs, and it's right there. It's right there. So I enjoy having 24 it 24-7, yeah. and you don't have to pay any dues, just your monthly no dues, yeah, well. monthly mortgage. There you go. But, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but th John, thanks so much, and I hope all you guys enjoy this. And, uh, and uh, look up John Saylor. On the, he's always we got him featured a lot on our YouTube channel and our Facebook groups. Um, and you got you're working on a new book project with Louis Simmons, I know. I am. Yep. So I am. specific so guys, training. Specific training. So guys, a lot keep, of stuff you could do on the mat. Yeah, I know. Yeah. John and I have done some books together as well, and did one on, on conditioning for combat sports, which is now out of print. Yeah. But Turtle yeah. Turtle Press did it. Yeah. Great book. But John's got some new stuff coming out. So keep looking, keep on the out, uh, lookout, guys, because anything you get from this man is pure gold. So I uh, th thanks so much, John. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate it. Thanks.